international outrage after an Israeli strike hits a school in Gaza, killing almost 90. Israel says the target was a Hamas command center, but the building was a shelter for hundreds fleeing the fighting. Also tonight, she was full of joy, light and love. Our hearts are broken. A loving tribute to the youngest victim killed in Southport. The penultimate day in Paris with emotions running high as Team GB picks up yet no medals and... Summer's not over, but the footy is back. Manchester City win the first trophy of the new season. There has been international condemnation tonight after an Israeli missile killed almost 90 people sheltering in a school in Gaza City. The Foreign Secretary David Lamy says he is appalled by the attack and the White House said it was deeply concerned. Egypt, who is trying to broker peace talks, claim Israel's strike shows a lack of political will to end the war in Gaza. The Israeli military insists the building was targeted because Hamas commanders were hiding inside it. A warning now, Emma Murphy's report shows some scenes you may find upsetting. They had been at prayer when the Israeli missiles hit. Now the prayers and the grief are for them. They've come to the school in Gaza City hoping it would provide refuge. Yet the place they saw sanctuary became a target. Among the dozens of dead, children, and now among the living, those who, if they survive, will forever mourn. My father, my father, he cries. We've been repeatedly displaced from one place to another, she says. There is no safety. After ten months of war, there is no time nor place for individual burials now. So to the continual hum of drones, the dead are buried together. Their bodies moved close to each other to maximise how many can be gathered in each grave. Even war has laws to protect civilians, and the scale of this massacre has prompted governments across the world to demand Israel respects those laws. Israeli claims that the building was a Hamas operations center, drowned out by the condemnation of the scale of civilian death. What we saw in this attack is that they're using highly explosive devices in densely populated areas. And that's something that we simply cannot stand for. That's a new level of, of low in a conflict like this, and the global community cannot stand for this kind of atrocity. Talks aimed at bringing peace to this region are due to begin again within days. But peace feels a long way off, something even the Egyptian co-hosts have acknowledged, accusing Israel of a lack of political will to end this war. Emma Murphy, ITV News, Beirut. Six-year-old BB King, the youngest of the three girls murdered in Southport, has paid a glowing tribute to their precious daughter. They say she was full of joy, light and love, and their hearts are broken. The couple also praised BB's nine-year-old sister, Jeannie, who witnessed the attack but managed to escape. Charlotte Cross reports. In the days after the tragic killing of three young girls in Southport, flowers, balloons and stuffed animals piled high as the community tried to come to terms with its grief. Today, the family of the youngest of the three, six-year-old BB King, paid tribute to their precious daughter. In a statement, Lauren and Ben King said, Our beloved BB, only six years old, was full of joy, light and love, and she will always remain in our hearts as the sweet, kind and spirited girl we adore. Our hearts are broken, but we find some comfort in knowing that Bibi was so deeply loved by all who knew her. She will forever be our shimmering star, and we will carry her with us in everything we do. BB 
stand along with nine-year-old Alice De Silva Aguiar on the left here and seven-year-old Elsie Dot Stancombe, all stabbed and killed at a Taylor Swift dance workshop. Phoebe's parents also released this picture and revealed that her nine-year-old sister Jeannie on the bottom right saw the attack but managed to escape. They said she had shown incredible strength and courage since that day. A teenager who was 17 at the time has been remanded in custody charged with the attack, a provisional trial set for January. In their statement today, Mr. and Mrs. King said the outpouring of love and messages of support here had offered comfort in what had been an unimaginably difficult time. They said it had meant the world to them, helping them find some solace in their grief as they try to find strength and healing in the days to come. Charlotte Cross, ITV News. Thousands of anti-racism campaigners gathered in towns and cities across the country today in peaceful protest against the far right, with police forces still on high alert. But among the many good-natured demonstrators were those of a different view, intent on getting their own message across. Our correspondent Peter Smith has been speaking to them. 6,000 police mobilised today. No place for complacency. Despite the violence and anti-immigrant, anti-Muslim riots of the last fortnight, people still turned up in Newcastle today under the same banner, enough is enough. There's no services for my children, there's no housing available for my children, they're a racist, they're a racist, it's an outrage. It's violence because they came to this country, they choose to be put into their community. No, yeah, no, this is what I'm saying, for me, this isn't about the migrants or the immigrants, it's about the authorities. I'm a well-educated person, actually, but... By doing this, does that put me in the bracket that society have made that we're all thugs? Are you concerned that by being here today after everything we've seen that you might be standing with people who are of the far right? No. Nobody here wanted to be called the far right. Not even this man carrying a symbol linked to neo-Nazis. That flag has an association with some far right organisations as well. Yes, and plus it has been used, but I think it's because it's a... What, um, part of our heritage. So you're, so you're, you're holding that, but you're telling me you're not far right. No, I wouldn't say far right. Yeah. There are multiple lines of police here, keeping these two sides well apart. And so far, they're holding the lines peacefully. By far the biggest crowds turned out today in solidarity with communities who have been under attack. Not just in Newcastle. <laughs> this in London. Cardiff and in Belfast, three of the UK nation's capitals, and here in Glasgow, where a total of two turned up to preach an anti-immigration message, drowned out by the crowd. You don't, you don't have to feel scared all the time. You, know, you can, you, you can't really, if these far right riots won't go unopposed, that people will show up for me, for people like me, and we will be safe. Peace has prevailed again. There is a feeling of hope here that the momentum behind the riots is now being brought to a halt. Peter Smith, ITV News, Newcastle. Kelly Fraser, the teenager who died after going missing in Tenerife, was remembered this afternoon in Lancashire. Families and friends gathered in Accrington for his funeral, with many wearing blue in his memory. The 19-year-old died from head injuries in June after walking through mountains. Now, and on the last full day of competition, Team GB is celebrating a host of new medals. Two silver, one in the pool, and another on the mat. Plus a handful of bronze medals too, most of them on the track. From Paris now, with all the details, here's Ellie Pitt. Kate Shortman and Izzy Thorpe's routine was called Rising Phoenix. A nod to the pair's renewed hope for a medal after changes to the way the sport is scored. The childhood friends are following in their mother's footwork. Their mums duetted together in the 1990s. And this is the moment they know they've won Team GB's first ever Olympic medal in artistic swimming. A silver. The looks on their faces tells you how much it means to them. Also taking home silver is Caden Cunningham, fighting in blue in the Taekwondo final. His Iranian challenger proved too powerful though, and Cunningham took second place. 
to the Stade de France, where Georgia Bell, who trains around her full-time job in cybersecurity, so was racing with the world's best in the 1500 meters. Her pace earned her a new title. Georgia Bell gets the bronze. Olympic medalist, as she secured Team GB's first bronze of the night on the athletics track. Then followed bronze for the women's 4x400 meter relay and the same color medal for the men in their relay race. Earlier today in the diving pool, Noah Williams was looking to add to the silver he got in the synchronized event, this time by himself. While his fourth turn put those hopes in jeopardy, it's frustrating with himself. his last dive was high scoring. He now has a bronze in his collection too. Today's haul means Team GB has more than 60 medals for a fourth consecutive Games. But the gold medal count is down. In fact, it's the lowest it's been since Athens 20 years ago. But there are still a few more chances to win ahead of tomorrow night's closing ceremony. Ellie Pitt, ITV News, Paris. Summer's not over yet, but the first football trophy of the new season has already been won. Manchester City lifted the community shield at Wembley after winning a penalty shootout 7-6 against Manchester United. Chris Scudder has the action and the celebrations. And so the season starts with a familiar sight, City lifting silverware. If the fans were hoping to see another chapter in a fierce rivalry, it felt more like a community love-in. It took a while to ignite. Bruno Fernandes thought he'd scored a beauty for United, ruled out for offside. Marcus Rashford then fluffed his lines in front of goal. Having been left out of the Euros, maybe not an instant return for England in front of the watching new interim coach. But it didn't appear to matter when Garnacho added to his catalogue of lovely goals. We weren't done though, and City saved it in the nick of time with a late equaliser from Bernardo Silva. So to penalties, and at the same end of Wembley where Sancho missed for England in the Euro 21 final, it happened again. It got the sudden death, and at 6-6, it all went wrong for Johnny Evans. Step forward, and Kanji to settle the match, and where they failed against the old enemy in the cup, City will start the new season next week with another trophy in the back. That's it for now. From all of us here on the very late team this weekend, good night.